Let's look at a more mathematically sophisticated way to do 2D kinematics. We're going to do it in terms of the position vector r. So an r with a vector hat, which equals um, the displacement from the origin. from the origin. Remember when someone asked earlier, why is position a vector? Because position is really displacement. It's just displacement from the origin. R does not mean radius. It has nothing to do with a circle or circular motion or a sphere, anything with a radius. As you go further in physics, you'll find R is just the general vector used to describe position when it could be along x or y or anywhere in space. So let's look at what do we really mean by that. So let's draw a couple of r's. Well, it's simply the vector from the origin, here's the origin, to a position. So our initial one is right there. There is r i. Right there, bigger. r i. So let's um, consider, consider two positions, where it started and where it ended, right? R initial, R final. So for R final, let's say, really it could be any of these, let's just pick another point along the motion, let's say here. So now I'm going to draw, there's R final. I'm drawing them nice and heavy so you can so see the whoops, right? That's R final. And in general, there's nothing mysterious about these. R really is just x i hat plus y j hat. It's just where you are in the x and y axis, just drawn as a vector from the origin. But I want to show you how this actually makes sense when you put it together to get the um, displacement or to get delta r. Right? So let's look at these two positions. Now let's draw them on top of each other here. So here is r initial, and here is r final, but we want to get the change, delta r, right? So delta r is what? Delta r is the displacement, r final minus r initial. Just like delta x was the displacement, x final minus x initial, right? So if we want to vector add these but subtract them, you would say rf and then you would add ri, but you'd flip it over, you'd make it go negative. Right, so ri is basically going to be like that. That's negative ri. Okay. And then vector add those, and it looks like this. Right, that is delta r. That's rf minus ri. There it is right there, delta r. And you look at it, and what does it look like? It looks like the vector here. See, delta r is along the path. It's just the vector going along the path. It's the delta x. It's the same. It's just the generalized x and y uh, displacement vector for a change in position. So we didn't move from the origin to these two places. We moved from this place to this place. Delta r is just a way to get a vector that goes from the initial position to the final position. If you wanted to, you could write it out in all of its glorious components. Let's do that just to make you feel better, just for fun, if this seems weird and unusual. You could write this as for the x components, it's x final minus x initial i hat plus y final minus y initial j hat. Just like the position vector is just x i hat and y j hat. It's just a more uh, compact way to write things. And it's nice because now we can just use the 1D equations with r hat if we want to, right? So we can say just like 1D. And now we can say things like, well, the 2D, you know, if we have the velocity anywhere in a two-dimensional plane, the average velocity is delta R over delta T. And the instantaneous velocity in a plane, V, uh, is dr dt. So those are some good kinematics equations or definitions that you could use to derive kinematics equations. And in this example, then, if we wanted to write out the kinematics, you would just apply the kinematics you know from 1D into the uh, 
the different components. Right? So what we would do, the main thing you're trying to do as we move forward into trajectories, if you can write the equation for R, you're done. You can solve any problem. So let's do that. Let's write the vector equation for R. R is a position at any time. Right? So the x component, we just think about x kinematics. Right? This thing is moving. Its velocity has an x component vx and a y component vy. So we say in the x, we have constant velocity motion with uh, no initial displacement. Right? So it's x initial plus vxt. x initial is 0. So it's just vx times t i hat. Right? That's the x component of r, the position. And in the y, it does have an initial position. Y initial plus the y component of the velocity times t, like that. And remember, those components are, are like this. This is x, y. We could draw the velocity like that. It has an x, x component and a y component. That's what vx and vy are. Once you have this, you can do lots of things. What's the velocity vector? Oh, that's easy. Just take the derivative. The derivative of this, vx times t, the derivative of that is just vx, i hat. What's the derivative of this? The derivative of that with respect to time, 0, vy, j hat. Eh, that had better be the velocity vector, right? In this case, that's very straightforward. What's the acceleration vector? Take another derivative, 0, plus 0, 0. There is no acceleration, right? This was uniform motion. So get used to using r. I'm going to show you how, if you can find r, you're done. You can solve any problem. 